The radar screen was empty, not because the threat had vanished, because the pilot's hands were trembling. Inside the cockpit of Turkey's first supersonic jet, built entirely on forbidden soil, test pilot Erkan knew one truth. If this bird doesn't fly, an entire nation's aerospace dream dies with it. Behind him, 724 engineers who hadn't slept in weeks. Above him, geopolitical rivals betting on his failure. Below him, four million square meters of steel, sweat, and defiance called TAI, Turkish Aerospace Industries. The facility so vast, 550 football fields could fit inside. This wasn't just a test flight, this was revenge. Revenge against every embargo. Every you can't. Every foreign power that said Turkey will never build a jet engine ecosystem. And the clock ticking backward, because in 72 hours, NATO intelligence had already circulated internal memos. Turkish Hurjet project, unlikely to achieve first flight target. Turkey sits at the razor's edge, Black Sea to the north, Syria's chaos to the south, the eastern Mediterranean burning with Greek-Israeli-Egyptian alliances. Every neighbor either armed by adversaries or becoming one. And here's the knife twist. Turkey's own F-16 modernization program, blocked by the US Congress. The message was clear, depend on us or perish. But Hurjet wasn't born from permission. It was born from isolation. When your so-called allies weaponize spare parts, you don't beg, you build. The jet trainer, seemingly innocent, designed to train pilots for advanced combat, was Turkey's Trojan horse. Master this, and you unlock the engineering DNA for the real prize. TFX Khan. Turkey's fifth generation stealth fighter. China watched, Russia calculated. NATO panicked. Because if Turkey cracks supersonic indigenous aviation, the entire defense supply chain realigns. Suddenly, Egypt wants Hurjet. Malaysia negotiates. Pakistan sends delegations. The Global South gets a non-Western jet option without strings attached. Hurjet's wing isn't aluminum. It's titanium composite hybrid technology. 2,500 precision drilled holes with 25 micron tolerance. For context, a human hair is 70 microns. One miscalculation, one vibration during drilling, and the entire wing, 700 components, becomes scrap metal. The chief engineer's words haunt the hangar. If we nail 2,000 Fremor 99 holes, but miss the 2,500th, the other 2,000 Fremor 99 don't matter. Now zoom out. The fuselage. Three sections, mid-body, rear body, canopy, had to align with coordinate system precision. Any bending, warping, or thermal expansion during transport. The jet becomes a $100 million museum piece. The assembly team didn't just move parts, they moved dreams suspended by crane cables, knowing one slip meant restart from zero. But here's the kicker. Herjet uses a digital fly-by-wire flight control system, Turkey's first on a manned aircraft. No mechanical cables, no backup strings. The pilot's stick talks to a computer. The computer talks to control surfaces. If the software fails mid-flight, the pilot becomes a passenger in a 17 times 700 pound coffin. This is why they built Ironbird, a full-scale ground simulator where every system failure gets tested before Urkan's life enters the equation. For three years, engineers tortured this non-flying replica. Fire scenarios, hydraulic ruptures, electrical storms, Every nightmare choreographed in steel before the real bird tasted sky. The following is not fiction. This is the stress test Hurjet was designed to survive. Zero six hundred hours. Two Hurjet trainers scramble from Konya Air Base. Mission, intercept unidentified aircraft violating Turkish airspace over the Black Sea. Pilots, fresh graduates from the Turkish Air Force Academy. This is their first live intercept. 0607 hours, lead pilot initiates climb to 30,000 feet. G-forces pin him against the seat. Herjet's GE F404 engine delivers 17,700 pounds of thrust. That's 32,000 horsepower screaming through afterburner. The cockpit shakes, not from fear, from raw physics. 
0612 hours, radar lock, the bogey, a reconnaissance drone, likely Russian origin, probing response times. Here's where Herjet's dual role design activates. It's not just a trainer, it's combat capable. Wing hardpoints carry live ordnance. The trainee pilot's hand hovers over the weapon selector. 0615 hours. The flight control computer processes 10,000 calculations per second. Pitch, yaw, roll. The digital brain compensates for turbulence the human hand can't feel yet. This is the Iron Bird legacy. Every line of code validated in ground hell, so it works in aerial heaven. 0618 hours. Visual contact. The drone banks hard east, fleeing toward international waters. Herjet matches the turn, 30 degree bank angle at Mach 0.9. The wings flex, not breaking, adapting. Those 2,500 titanium holes, they're distributing stress across the airframe like a steel spider web. 0621 hours, mission complete. The drone exits Turkish airspace. But the message is sent. Turkish airspace is now defended by Turkish-built supersonic eyes. The trainee pilot exhales. His instructor, riding in the tandem rear seat, smiles. Welcome to the 21st century, Lieutenant. This scenario repeats 40 times per year. Because Hurriyet isn't just hardware, it's the assembly line for the next generation of Turkish fighter pilots who fly TFXKN stealth fighters into 2050. The engine that almost never came, January 2023, two months before first flight. The GEF-404 engine, the beating heart, was stuck in U.S. Customs. Not because of paperwork, because detection dogs flagged the shipping container. The scent? Industrial lubricants from the engine casing. Customs demanded reinspection. Each day of delay pushed Turkey closer to missing the March 18th symbolic first flight date. Gallipoli victory anniversary. The TAI team didn't sleep. Engineers coordinated with GE across time zones. Lawyers negotiated with US export authorities. Cargo planes stood by in New York. The engine finally cleared, arriving in Ankara at 10 p.m. on a Tuesday, just 19 days before deadline. Chief project manager's reaction? We tracked that engine like a heart transplant patient waiting for a donor. When the F-404 was lowered into Hurjet's fuselage, the hangar erupted in applause. Not because the job was done, because the impossible was now probable. But engines don't just bolt on, they need ground runs. Full throttle tests while the jet stays chained to the tarmac. During the first engine test, a fuel line leaked. Oil dripped onto the concrete. Panic? No. The team tightened the connection, refilled the oil, and restarted. Failure is data. Data is progress. By test run five, the F-404 roared at maximum military power. 17,700 pounds of thrust turning kerosene into controlled thunder. The sound wave rippled across the TAI facility. Engineers covered their ears, but they were smiling. The map after Herjet, fast forward to 2028. Herjet is no longer a prototype, it's operational. Turkish Air Force Academy graduates 120 new fighter pilots per year using Herjet trainers. Export orders flood in. Malaysia, 12 units. Egypt, 18 units. Pakistan, potential 24 units. But here's the geopolitical earthquake. Turkey offers Herjet with zero political conditions. No NATO membership required. No US approval needed. Just cash and delivery. Suddenly, Countries locked out of Western defense markets have options. China's J-10 trainer, more expensive, less proven. Russia's Yak-130, sanctioned into irrelevance. Hurjet, the Goldilocks zone, advanced enough to train fifth gen pilots, affordable enough for mid-tier air forces. And the revenue, fueling TFX Kayan development. Every Hurjet sold pumps $20 million into Turkey's stealth fighter program. By 2030, TAI becomes self-sustaining, a defense ecosystem feeding on its own success. NATO's reaction? Classified. But Pentagon analysts now track Herjet exports like missile proliferation. Because once you master trainers, you master fighters. And once you master fighters, you rewrite regional power balance.
The moment everything changed. March 18th, 2023, 10.59 a.m. Erkan's voice crackles over the radio. Tower, Hurjet 001, requesting takeoff clearance. The tower responds, cleared for takeoff, Godspeed, throttle forward. The F-404 engine screams, nose wheel lifts at 120 knots. Three seconds later, airborne. The crowd below, 724 engineers, government officials, families, frozen in silence. Not because they doubted, because belief and reality were finally colliding. Hurdiet climbs to 10,000 feet. Banks left, rolls right. Every control surface responding exactly as Ironbird predicted. 17 minutes later, touchdown. Perfect landing. Urkan's first words after engine shutdown? The sky finally heard our voice. The question, nobody's asking. If Turkey, under sanctions, embargoes, and geopolitical siege, can build a supersonic jet from scratch in six years. What happens when they have a decade? Two decades? The answer terrifies some. Inspires others, because Hurriyet isn't the end. It's chapter one of a defense industrial revolution written in titanium, code, and defiance. And the next chapter, already in the air.